Hi, and welcome to the Sabbath Christian Church's online sermon. We have been doing the Hebrew analysis, the seven levels of meaning of Hebrew words. Notice the seven. That's God's number of completion, seven days. Six days God created and the seventh he rested. Well, there are seven levels of Hebrew words you find out, and the rabbis, uh, uh, in order to become a rabbi, need to know this. We could also, we also uh, found ways to do that just using Strong's uh, with the special education that you get. So we have already discussed. Now we were doing it alphabetically, not necessarily by or, or order of any other kind. Uh, alphabetically uh, according to the Hebrew alphabetical. So we talked about things like the great escape. And that's what Passover was, the great escape. And we went through the details of that and the uh, markings of the blood and uh, all the other things that they uh, had to do. And then they escaped from the evil of Egypt. Passover, the great escape. And they were rescued and delivered doing the same thing. The Pharaoh said, get out of town. God had rescued them. And the Pharaoh did what uh, he had to do at that time. And they were delivered and they went through the, uh, uh, they went through the river and, and to the other side. And the Pharaoh changed his mind and came after them. And he, uh, uh, they got caught underneath the water and they got washed away just like the people of the time of Noah got washed away. Then we found out about the inner man's face that uh, a person shows what's in his mind by his face. How important that is to uh, the people who were escaping doing the uh, uh, Passover great escape. And then there's a cornerstone. The cornerstone is a physical thing in a building. Uh, it could be a physical thing in a wall around a, uh, a city or a country. It could be uh, a cornerstone in terms of a person being the chief cornerstone and so forth. So now we are going to start off uh, alphabetically speaking, not important speaking, because this is the important word of all that all these others derive from, and the seven levels, is Pesach, Passover. And according to some of the people who study this, they say that there are three levels, three ways of looking at the Passover before the analysis. There's the historic setting for Passover. That's in Exodus. It says, The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be to you the beginning of months for you. It is the first months of the year for you, and you shall keep it up to the 14th day of the same month in the whole assembly. And they will take blood and strike it on the uh, side post and the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat. That's the historic setting. That is the first. That is the one that uh, all the others uh, will be derived from. God set that up for them as the first and basis of the others. That's the number one historical setting of Pesach, Passover. Then there are several references to the texts that spell out the procedures and, and going through these uh, three levels. The, the procedures that spell out for Passover. In Leviticus it says on the 14th day of each month and uh, biblically speaking the first uh, day of the year is approximately two weeks before the uh, uh, Passover uh, with the uh, uh, full moon I believe. So in the 14th day of the first month is the even at it is it said 
interesting translation is the King Ver King James Version, uh, the Lord's Passover. On the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Uh, now, there are two holy days that are involved in this thing. Jesus had to be executed, as we know, we'll be going to a great deal, a good deal of the New Testament uh, later on. And uh, this is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. First day you shall have a holy convocation, so there's a holy day there. There are seven holy days throughout the year. Again, the seven, the completion, the way God does it. And uh, it says, uh, you seven days you must eat the unleavened bread unto the Lord. And, uh, and the first day will be a holy convocation. And on the uh, last day, there will be a, uh, also a holy convocation. So within the, oh, that's the, this is the only one that has within the holy day, because the importance of Passover, within the holy day, uh, within the holy period, the holy time there, are two uh, holy days. All the others have one, Pentecost and so forth, at one day. Six days shall you eat unleavened bread, on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the Lord your God. You shall do no work on it. So this is a top-notch, high-rated holy day. No work. Now, the there's a historical <coughs> sense of it. You build up a little bit of the way that the Passover works. And now there is a historical way of looking at the Passover. Uh, the sons of Israel camped at Kigel. They observed Passover on the evening of the 14th day and so forth. Uh, on the day after Passover, on the very day, they ate the produce of the land, the unleavened cakes, parched grain. And so this is the first historical thing when they moved out of the wilderness into the uh, land of Canaan. They ate some of the yield of the land of Canaan that year. So historically, <coughs> after Israel moved into the promised land, the land of Canaan, and we go back in history to Abraham and so forth, uh, we, we see that this is the land. So historically, they did it there. Now, in the time of Hezekiah, they, uh, uh, they wrote letters <coughs> to Ephraim and Manasseh. They should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to celebrate. This is in Chronicles. The Passover of the Lord, uh, of the, of the Lord God of Israel. For the king and the princesses and all the assembly decided to celebrate Passover. Uh, in the second month, and this is another part of the history of it. If you can't make it on the first month, you can do it on the second month. And they did it. Uh, they slaughtered the Passover animals. The priests set their office, encouraged them to come to the house of the Lord. They put the holy ark in the house of Solomon and King David. And uh, a burden on your shoulders be no longer, because it's settled down there and serve the Lord your God. <clears throat> they, uh, the exiles observed Passover. It says in Ezra. And they did the same kinds of things that they did in the uh, other places. The priests and the, uh, and the Levites purified themselves. All of them were pure. They slaughtered the Passover lame, lamb, lame, lame lamb. Uh, no, they couldn't use those kind of lamb. They had to be in good shape, perfect shape. And they, uh, the sons of Israel who returned from exile because they were put into Israel because they weren't living up to God's way and word. So they came back and they did it. They observed the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days with joy for the king had caused them to rejoice and they turned the uh, king of uh, Assyria toward them to encourage uh, them in the work of the house of the Lord the God of Israel then we come to the New Testament which we are going to go through in great specific detail the Christian Passover then came the first day of unleavened bread which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed and Jesus sent Peter and John saying Go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat it. Da, da, da. Amen. And thank you for watching and listening.